Hey guys, did you see the Avs game last night? They lost 4-1 in the season opener. I think they should trade all the coaches and the players and everyone else. Shut up. It's the first game of the season. Relax. Oh my goodness gracious! Was it in time? Score! Justice is served! If you didn't know, that opener was a reference to Steve Dangle, the man, the myth, the legend pretty much wouldn't be hockey YouTubing without him, so credit where credit is due to the OG. Avs lose to the St. Louis Blues 4-1 to on opening night in what was just a rough game all the way around for Colorado. The game did not start out that way, though. The game actually started out quite strong for the Avs. They draw a power play one minute in, and while that power play doesn't work great, it still gets momentum going in their favor, and they quickly draw a second opportunity on the power play, and that is where they capitalize. Five minutes into the season, the Avs get on the board for the first time. We should have known here, I guess, because this is kind of a mess of a play. Gerard is working with the puck up at the point, and he's going to send it down to JT Comfort. This is the second unit here, to be clear. And even this pass is a bit errant. It gets tipped, but Comfort is able to collect it. And as he's getting pressured along the boards, he just kind of tries to throw this to Kadri in the middle. Had Kadri received this effectively, it's probably a dead play, but he doesn't. And the good news is, the Blues have heavily overloaded on the near side. You can see just how ridiculously open Andre Burakovsky is on the far side. So when Kadri misses this puck as it comes through his legs, oh look at that, it's coming right to Burakovsky. Yeah, so Burakovsky's about to get to step into one, and it's gonna be about at the hash marks probably the last guy or maybe you give it to mckinnon and call him the second to last guy you want doing that he does get a little bit lucky actually he winds up hits the defenseman stick and it flutters right in past bennington so the abs get a little bit of puck luck early in the season and you're feeling pretty good they're one for two on the power play and you're ready to go but the abs wouldn't really show up for a lot of this game after that and it wasn't a luck thing either as the blues did hit two posts in this game whereas the avs only hit the one so they got plenty of puck luck on their side they just kind of collapsed on themselves the avs goal was their third shot on goal they would end the first period with five meanwhile st louis would end the first period with 16 the Blues completely controlled the rest of the period from that goal onward. And I really don't think the Blues did anything special in this game. The Avs just kind of imploded. They made mistake after mistake, and you make enough mistakes, eventually the Blues are going to be there to capitalize on some of them. And that's exactly what happened on pretty much every single goal the Blues scored in this game. The first one comes just shy of halfway through the first period, and it's probably the least egregious mistake for the Avs of the ones that cost them goals. The Avs are forechecking aggressively here, all three forwards deep in the zone, but this is a pretty standard breakout situation. The Blues start to break out. You see Saad curl back for a second forecheck effort there, and this is where the issues start to crop up. As the Blues escape this forecheck and start to work up the ice, you saw Kadri head check behind him there, sees that there's no one up the ice on this near side for the Blues. The problem is, he seems to just phone it in from here on out. You can see Ian Cole starting to try and back up into the neutral zone, and Kadri basically just stops skating. Meanwhile, Saad, after having come in, is now in a foot race, one that he's going to lose. So, as the Blues enter into the neutral zone, Kadri still hasn't realized, oh, I'm going to have to help get back for Saad to help support here. That leads to a three-on-two situation, which is exacerbated by Ian Cole just getting roasted. I don't know. He needed to turn around and get back, or needed to have given up on the play significantly earlier and left the offensive zone, because he just gets completely beat here to a level that is just frankly not acceptable. So that alone leads it to a two-on-one, and with Saad getting beat clean and Kadri recognizing the situation late, it's a three-on-one. Ryan Graves just has no hope here. He tries to play the puck carrier, does what he can, but it's a three-on-one, and that allows Oscar Sundquist to walk in and finish. I'm willing to give Brandon Saad a little bit of a pass on this entire game, which I didn't think he was great in. He honestly looked lost, which is kind of my point. He's had, what, 10 days of practice with the Avs as they're trying to get up to speed and on an entire team that looks rusty. He was just one that looked like he didn't fit in yet. 
Not something I'm worried about long term. Give him five games and I think things will start to click. The rest of this play and the rest of the game, honestly, for the Avs was just sloppiness abound. Some of that you attribute to rust. Some of it, honestly, the Avs just needed more effort here. They looked like they came in like a team that thought they were going to cruise, but absolutely didn't. And it was a little bit of a shock to their system. The rest of the first period just felt like you were stuck in a rinse and repeat cycle of the Avs getting pinned in their own zone and failing to get the puck out cleanly. It didn't take long for that to result in a St. Louis lead. So the Avs lose a defensive zone faceoff here, and the Blues are able to work it up the near wall, but there's nothing really dangerous happening here yet. A puck gets deflected as it goes through the middle of the ice, and there's a chance for the Avs to get out here. Saad just isn't quite able to track down this puck, so it stays in the zone, and a bouncing puck goes St. Louis's way. That's a little bit tough here, but again, the Avs are going to lose another chance at getting the puck out here, as it just kind of drifts through Kadri's legs, and here we're in trouble. Now you have all three forwards out of the zone, and Ryan Graves cheating up. Here's the problem. There's St. Louis Blues behind Ryan Graves. As things get turned around, it's a two-on-one extremely easily as Graves has overcommitted to a puck that was never truly an Avs possession there. And you've left rookie Connor Timmins by himself on a two-on-one. Not a ton Timmins can do here, and the Blues do make him look like a rookie for it as well, leaving absolutely no chance for Grubauer the back-to-back -back passes easy tap in. The Blues simply came more ready to play to this game than the Avs did, and the Avs said it themselves in the post-game interviews. No excuses. This played right into the Blues' hands. They got the lead in the first period, and they're just a tough team to play when they get ahead. It's part of the game, and the Avs just couldn't claw their way back through it. One silver lining, the Avs did kill both penalties they ended up taking in this game, so that's nice at least. It's 2-1 after 1. The Avs looked much better in period 2. There was still a lot of sloppiness going on, but the effort levels were up. They started possessing the puck a little bit more, and they did dominate possession in that period, outshooting the Blues 16-5 to themselves this time. And this is where you kind of start to see the rust of the Avs. I don't really have a bunch of negative for them in this period, but things just weren't quite clicking. Rantanen gets an opportunity walking in, fires it right into Bennington's glove. A couple of cross-seam passes to create good opportunities come through, but the puck just doesn't quite connect. It dribbles off of a stick. It gets kicked by a skate, but not to the stick. Just a little bit off. That's the type of thing that no worries at all. That stuff will clear up in a couple of games. And credit to Jordan Bennington in this game. The Avs had 27 shots on goal and Bennington only gave up one goal. A lot of those chances were not very high percentage for the Avs, but on the few that were, he got the job done. So the Avs get a couple of power play opportunities as well, but have nothing to show for them. And things just aren't quite going in for the Avs. You even have this play, which doesn't go their way. Nathan McKinnon trying to go coast to coast here. As he gains the offensive zone, all of the Blues collapse on him. Everything's cool here, but as this play goes forward, all of a sudden, sticks just start teleporting up into his hands like crazy. I mean, he just gets basically mugged as he's going to the net here, and yet there is no penalty call on that. One more angle. You thought, oh, they got stick or whatever. No, absolutely not. You'll see, there goes stick number one, way up on his top hand. Stick number two, currently coming in on his bottom hand, hits it pretty darn clean, in fact, and then even gets assaulted a little bit more. That one's probably clean at the end, but two pretty clear sticks on the hands there on the way in. I don't know how that wasn't a penalty. In fact, the Avs even got a penalty on them a little bit later in that play. McKinnon's reaction, he can't believe it. He throws his hands to the sky, he just, he doesn't know what's going on. Stevie, come on, bro. I can't move my hands while I'm walking in. What am I supposed to do? I'm not going to nitpick it too much because the Avs absolutely lost them this game themselves, so just a funny little thing that I noticed. No goals in the second period. We get to the third period, and it's just slow, sloggy St. Louis Blues hockey, and the Avs never really get off the ground in an attempt to make a comeback. The Avs get caught in the sludge. The Blues can play that predatory style of hockey that we see them play with the lead so often, and the way the Avs have played this game, you knew mistakes were coming. When they did, the Blues made them pay. Sam Gerrard going back to collect the puck. You'll notice he never picks his head up and checks where his teammates are. That's problem number one. Problem number two, I don't know if it's Sam just not thinking or if someone missed an assignment in the systems here. It's possible that someone needed to get back into this corner to be an outlet for Sam, an emergency valve. 
but nobody does. Had Sam picked his head up, he would have seen all three forwards and wherever his defenseman is maybe going for a change or something, just kind of floating, if not heading out of the zone. So when he tries to just drop it off as he gets pressured, well, it goes to absolutely no one. On top of that, it's a pretty bad drop-off, so it doesn't even go into the corner where maybe the Avs can win the race. It just drops directly behind the net. No chance for an Av to get to it before Barbashev can recover and collect it. And that also causes panic as they try to get back around and scramble into a defense. Nobody picks up Kyle Clifford. Nobody even looks at him. They just kind of skate towards the front of the net. And Clifford just kind of goes into the soft spot at the top of the hash marks and gets enough room to set himself up and get a shot off. And Gruby, I mean, not sure what he's supposed to do there. Avs defense just needs to be better. You pretty much knew how this game was ending at that point. The Avs just didn't have it tonight. And while that's frustrating in the first game of the season, I'm also just throwing this one in the bin. Do the Avs need to be better? Absolutely. Will they be better? I bet you they will. The number one thing here is puck management. I mean, it's pretty blatant. The Avs just have to be crisper, make clean passes, hold on to pucks, clean exits and entries. Very obviously things that the Avs should and have been good at, so I expect they will be again very, very soon. Just to wrap up the final score, even the goalie is flubbing pucks tonight. Blues rim a puck in around the boards here. You catch Tim and snoozing a little bit here. You catch Comfort snoozing a little bit here, but it's not the main issue. As the puck comes around, Grubauer goes to play it, and he gets just the wrong amount of it. He doesn't stop it, but he stops enough of it to where it trickles to the corner. Now all of a sudden, it's not coming out hard to where Comfort can get it, and it's not stopped to where Sam could get it on a reverse either. It's just going to float directly to Thomas as an easy pickup in the corner. That Timmins just kind of floating comes back to bite him as he gets beaten to the spot by Sunquist, and Sunquist gets a pretty much free goal off of the rebound that Gruby was not prepared for. So, the Avs are supposed to be a cup contender this year, and they start the season very, very rough. That is what it is. They get a free pass, but this is the one that they get. If they want to be real contenders, they don't get very many of these. I think everyone knows the Avs can play better than that, including themselves, and the expectation is that they will. They need to fill that expectation immediately. With the homestand style series the NHL is doing this year, they get exactly the chance to redeem themselves against this very same team on the exact same ice. So... Go get the Blues on Friday, and everyone will forget about this game real quick. That is the end of the first game video review of the 2021 season. Thank you for watching. I am Rudo, and man, I'm just happy hockey is back, even if it is an Avs loss. Check out thednvr.com for our other post-game coverage, and if you haven't checked them out yet, be sure to check out our season preview videos as well. We go through the entire Avs lineup, and they're pretty cool, if I do say so myself.